Hey, what's up everyone? Tankenstein here. In this video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit fun, at least I consider it to be fun, because I'll be honest with you guys, I have not really been enjoying making YouTube videos for War Thunder over the last few weeks. And the reason being is because, as I'm sure a lot of you know, the most recent patch came out, and right before that, there was a summer event. And it was just kind of like I, I was a hamster on a wheel, and uh, ultimately the problem with that is just you end up making content for the vehicles so you can get views and so that people will watch your future content that you're more passionate about that you might feel more proud of and not that I haven't been proud of some of my most recent videos I'm actually really proud of my a5c review because some of the editing techniques on that I've only used on that one thus far so I'm, I'm getting more advanced in so far as editing and all that's concerned but that's beside the point you just end up making videos just for the sake of making videos so that you can just stay on top of things so you can stay relevant and that's no fun so I'm gonna be doing something a little bit fun in this video and that is I'm gonna be pulling a Sergeant Fitty. I don't know if you guys... <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to be pulling a Sergeant Fitty, but I don't know if you guys know who Sergeant Fitty is, but basically, if you, I think like a year, year and a half, two years ago, he was a War Thunder YouTuber. Now he goes by Flack Alley. He releases, he actually makes history videos, which I eventually want to start making a lot of history videos. So let me know in the comments below if you want me to make history videos. But anyways, so what he does is he, um, what he did was apparently he had done a lot of giveaways. There, were, there was like a $60 giveaway, whatever, uh, for a pack. And apparently it was, rigged for his friends so I've got a giveaway in this and so instead of having it rigged for people I know because I've never had any of my my giveaways being rigged for people that I know because literally no one that I know in real life plays War Thunder all my friends really do not like history and uh, I'm pretty much the only person in my friends group who plays War Thunder so I'm giving three beginners packs away so there will be three separate winners and each of those winners in order to to actually compete in this contest all that you need to do is like, comment, and subscribe. And the beginner's pack is whatever you want. So if you win, then you get the beginner's pack and you can choose it, whatever it is. So it can be the US beginner's pack, German, French. I really recommend the French because it is awesome. But again, like, comment, subscribe. It is not open to PSN users. The reason being is because unfortunately, PSN users, for whatever reason, have an embargo against them through Gaijin. I do not know why. I think it's something to do with how PlayStation structures its store. So unfortunately, this is not open to PSN users. However, if you're a PC or Xbox player, you can join again, like, comment, and subscribe to enter the contest. And also comment below, let me know your in-game username. That'll make it 20 million times easier for me to send the gift once you win. And just tell me whatever pack you want in your comment. So like, comment, subscribe in order to enter. And in the comment, include your in-game username if you'd like, I would strongly prefer it, and what pack you would want so I can just send it right over to you. So on the day that, that the winners are chosen, and the uh, that day will be the 24th, so next Friday, uh, September 24th, 2021, I will be sending out these gifts and Whoever wins, well, I'll comment on your uh, comment, so to speak, and I will announce you as the winner. So good luck, everyone. I really want you guys to win. This is how I have fun with the game. I really want to see you guys having fun. And being that I am known as a beginner's channel, so to speak, at least that's why I've heard I have a lot of beginner's guides, content, tips and tricks, so on and so forth. Content really just geared towards helping people at the lower end of the skill level. You know, I really want you guys to succeed. I would, again, really go for that French premium pack or the French beginners pack. But ultimately, again, the choice is yours. Whatever pack you want, if you win, I will send it right to you right when you win. So that all being said, being that this is a beginner's channel, I also have a review because people love reviews and this will be a micro review. We were talking just a few minutes, just enough where it still counts as a review. And again, because this is a beginner's channel, this review will be on something accessible to everyone. And that is the JA37 Vigan. Yes, I'm doing a micro review on the on the Vigan. No noobs allowed. I'm just kidding. It is going to be on the Vigan just because haha, it's kind of funny, but uh, to include it in this sort of video. But but that's also me having fun because I just want to have fun with this game again, guys. It's not like I don't. It's just the content, like I said, kind of is a little bit rough to make sometimes because of how Gaijin structures their releases. But um, that being said, let's get into the Vigan review. And I promise it'll be really, really short because this is a main tech tree vehicle. Everyone pretty much knows about it at this point, what its capabilities are. You've seen the hype. You've seen the gameplay. You've seen pretty much everything on it. But this will be my own little fun take on it. Again, a micro overview. So let me know in the comments below if this is something you want me to do in the future three four minute review let me know either way let's get into it 
So for this review of the Vigan, I'm going to make it short and fun. I'll let you look at its stats here on the side of the screen, and I'll have a picture showing its loadout options as well. Now, as many of you people know, I do have a beef with Gaijin concerning the top speed of the Vigan, as even in a flight manual that one of my subscribers shared with me, it shows that Gaijin's top speed for the Vigan is possibly short by 200 to 250 kilometers per hour. That's whatever, and I'm not going to pick up that beef in this video. However, if you'd like, you can check that out in the video description below. Now, for its roles, it's basically just going to be an interceptor and a dogfighter. Of course, Gaijin gives it the obligatory ground attack rockets to make this so that it has some versatility, but we all know that that's not the main purpose of the Vigan. Though they are solid and work in a pinch if you need top level CAS, especially being that the Vigan has a ballistic computer, you'd possibly be better off selecting the A32 or one of the Saab 105 planes, especially if you're in a top tier match. As I said, though, very few people actually care about CAS when it comes to the Vigan. So its main weapons are going to be its missiles, of which are the RB-24J and the RB-71. You do get the RB-24, which is basically the AIM-9Bs, which is kind of buns, but the main weapons for this are going to be the RB-24J and the RB-71. Again, both are guided missiles. Now, the RB-24J are license-built short-range AIM-9 P3 Sidewinders, so they have decent tracking and have 20 Gs of maximum overload. The RB-71 are medium-range radar-guided options that are license-built mid-range Skyflash missiles. They have up to 25 Gs of overload and a launch range of 50 kilometers with a lock range of 30 kilometers and over 10 kilograms of explosive yield. These are extremely powerful missiles that will typically yield a kill or two per match, at least with the planes that it might face in the game as of the recording of this video. They even go up to Mach 4. The only bad thing about them is that you're only able to carry two of them, but you do still get to carry up to four RB24Js, which makes up for it in my opinion. In all, the Vigan will be an interceptor and has a great capability to dogfight as well, being that it is ultra maneuverable and sturdy enough to handle up to 30 Gs in a turn before snapping its wings, at least in most scenarios. In all, the Vigan is one bad man pajama. Now for its strengths, we have its ridiculous and currently best in-game missile loadout. It won't be bested for at least a few updates, and even still, it will remain extremely powerful for likely years to come. Second, it has a ridiculous acceleration once you get beyond 600 kilometers per hour. Its low speed acceleration is a bit booty chatter, but it picks up the slack IKEA style once you reach that 600 kilometers per hour or so threshold. Third, it has a good cannon. Though it has few rounds, it easily crits enemies. The only problem is that aside from its lack of ammunition, it doesn't fire any tracers, meaning that you really need to know how to lead opponents with stealth shells before you start to fly this bad boy. It also has up to 56 millimeters of armor pen with its APHE ground ammo belt, which could be useful when attacking ground. Fourth, as excellent maneuverability. Overall, I'd say it's somewhat comparable to a slightly heavier MiG-21 in terms of maneuverability with a payload that could make an F-4 Phantom blush. Fifth, the JA-37 has countermeasures, which makes it technically the JA-37C. Initially, these were not guaranteed, but thank you Gaijin for bringing them in and changing its designation to the JA-37C. And finally, for its strengths, it has a ballistics computer for its rockets, which makes them far more efficient when used and actually makes it quite nasty, at least in the hands of some people when it comes to CAS. Now, for its weaknesses, the Vigan guzzles fuel faster than 1962 Cadillac Eldorado. You'll need a minimum of 30 minutes of fuel to to bring to a match as you will likely only have around 15 to 20 minutes left once you even spot enemies, at least if you're liberal with your afterburner. As mentioned before, the Vigan can only carry up to 150 shells for its cannon into each match. Combine this with lack of tracers and you have a very difficult to use cannon, at least if you're not used to being a gunfighter. Third, the Vigan is so maneuverable that your pilot will black out constantly or at least get very close. The Vigan is extremely capable. You have to make sure that your pilots are extremely capable as well, at least when it comes to G force resistance. And finally, CAS is by no means a priority on this plane, and it's hardly even able to be considered a secondary role for the Vigan. Thus, while you can get kills with it, especially being that it does have a ballistics computer, you'll probably be much better off going to lower BR Swedish planes to go after ground targets. So, should you get the Vigan? Yes. Was it ever even a question? If you're a missileer, you'll absolutely love hiding many kilometers away from enemy sight while you sling near hypersonic missiles carrying a buttload of explosives towards your enemy, all while you simply go back to base and rearm it to do it again and again with impunity. 
or if you like some hair on your chest, the Vigan is perfectly well suited to dogfights close enough where you can catch the common cold from enemy pilots being so close that they violate social distancing guidelines. Heck, you can even rain hellfire down to enemy troops via your 24M70 unguided rockets. This however would be silly and is the equivalent of somebody getting into a Saab and doing a drive-by in GTA with a single action revolver. You'll occasionally hit your mark, especially being that you do have your ballistics computer, but you'll just be putting heat on your name. If anyone needs to tell you to work towards buying the Vigan, then you probably shouldn't be flying it. Otherwise, buy the Vigan and have a ball. You deserve it, champ. That said, thanks so much for watching this weird video. Please like, comment, subscribe. But that said, I'll see you all on the other side. Thanks so much again for watching and take care.